How you doing, y'all? This video, I'm going to concentrate on taking a DXF file that a friend sent me and doing some minor modifications to it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and stretch the, the height of the file without changing any of the other geometry. Now, the program that I use for modifying DXF files is called DraftSight. And it's made by Dassault Systems. And they're the people that make SolidWorks. Now, it's absolutely free to use. And this is not an endorsement, paid or anything otherwise. In fact, they don't even know that I'm doing this. Uh, they might ask me to take this down, but we'll take that chance. Um, it's free. Uh, you do have to register it, and you'll need a valid email address for that. They send you an activation code via email. But once you activate it, it's absolutely free to use. And I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. So, stick around and I'll show you how I modify a DXF file in DraftSight. When we first open up DraftSight, this is the program. This is what it looks like here. It may be different colors. Um, you can get in and modify the colors of your draft site window and how it presents itself. I mean the page might be black and your origin here may be white or yellow or red or blue but you can get in and modify it yourself and um, there are several tutorials on their website that uh, will tell you how to do that but uh, just a little brief overview here uh, if you've never done any work with a CAD program. Um, it can look a little daunting. I mean there's tools all over the place here but we're going to take it in small um, easy to digest pieces here. Um, of course you have your graphics window up here but you also down here you have the command window and this is um, a standard feature on most CAD programs because there are some tools that you use that will uh, prompt you for more information. So we'll keep our eye down here on the command window as we're using this. So what I want to do is I want to modify a DXF file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load this DXF file. Now uh, most CAD programs um, the DWG file is the native format. Now, draft site, it, when you first go searching for a file, it uh, that's what it looks for. So you have to go in and tell it what you want it to look for. Now it's already in the correct folder, and here is the name of my DXF file. So I'm going to double click on it and open that file. So here we have the part that I need to modify and the context of this video is this is a, a part that I need to cut out and uh, I'm going to print out this pattern and all of these this is uh, the outside perimeter of the part and I've got some circles here that represent holes I'm going to have to drill and then I've got this uh, radius rectangle here that I need to cut out. I'm going to basically do all my modifications and print this file and use a spray adhesive to stick it down to a piece of material and then drill these holes and drill my quarter corner radius here on each corner and then cut it out with a jigsaw. So in order to do that, um, I need to make sure everything's right. Now, um, just to check the size here, I, I need this piece to be 8 inches from here to here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dimension it just to check it. So I go up here to the dimension window and I'm going to click on linear because I need a linear dimension. Now if you look down here in the command window, it's saying specify the first extension line position. The extension line is the little line between the dimension and the part. So my first dimension is going to be right up here in the end point, or my first measuring point. 
and then it says specify second extension line position and I'm going to go down here to this point here and click and I see now drag this out here and click again to set it in place and we can see that it's six inches tall well I need for this part to be eight inches tall I don't want to change any of this geometry here and I don't want to change these holes their relationship with this top line so I just want to stretch it somewhere in here I want to leave all this together and I want to leave all this together uh, the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to select these two circles and this top line and it's much like several other graphics and CAD and CAM programs in that will draw a box around and through the objects and what makes this work is the direction that you pull this box so I'm gonna go up here outside of the rectangle and click left click and pull this green box around those two circles and enclosing at least part of that uh, top line then left click again and that selects those three objects so now I'll go over here to the Modify menu and come down to Move. Now these three entities are still selected and if we look down here at the command window it's saying specify the from point. That's where we want to move these things from. Well, I'm going to come up here on the line somewhere and it turns out I chose the midpoint. Okay fine. Now I'm going to left click and just drag it upwards a little bit. Okay, now my finger is completely off of the mouse button. I'm not touching the mouse at all. And if you look down in the command window, the bottom left, it says specify the destination. I'm going to go over to the keypad and hit number two for two inches and hit enter. Now you can see my dimension line has changed to eight inches. So this distance to here between here and here is now eight inches. So to complete this modification all I need to do now is extend these lines and I'll do that by just clicking a line and by activating this line here selecting this line here I've got my three nodes here and that's the two end points and the center point. Well, now I want to go ahead and click on this endpoint node and uh, let go. And I just drag it straight up to that endpoint. Click again. And I'll do the same over here. Click. Click. Straight up. Click. Now I'll come over here to just off away from the uh, rectangle, right click, deselect all, and there we go. It's that simple. My dimension is now 8 inches tall like I wanted. This geometry has stayed the same. This geometry has stayed the same and it's basically had the effect of stretching it here in the center in between those bits of geometry. So now what I can do is I can get rid of those dimension lines because I no longer need them and again just select start from the upper right hand side click drag it down to enclose or at least touch select those hit delete and my dimensions are gone. Now this is ready to use on a CAM program. I could save this now and uh, use it on the CNC, um, import it into my CAM software. But for this context, for this purpose, uh, what I'm doing is, I, again, I'm going to print this out and then use some spray adhesive to mount it to a workpiece. So in order to get good accurate uh, holes here, I want to go ahead and put center marks, crosshairs in these holes, so I have a 
reference point uh, when I go to drill them. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back over here to dimension and go down to center mark. Click on that and if you see down here in my command window it says specify the curved entity. Let's just pick a circle here and click and there's the center mark. Now I want to do the same thing over here and the way draft site works is if I just go over to the keyboard and hit enter it reloads that last tool that I used and I can click here and make another center mark and now I'm gonna go around and just hit every one of these circles hit enter then the circle hit enter the circle hit enter the circle hitting enter basically reloads the tool and now I want to get a center mark on all these little on the radius in each corner here so I'll hit enter click enter click enter click enter click now I can come along with an all or a brad point bit whatever mark my center mark and then when I put it on the drill press or use my hand drill to drill these holes I'll have a good center point and I know these two the accuracy of these two will be right here 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 etc okay this file is now ready to use and for our purposes here to print this file out and use it as a pattern we're gonna go up here to the file menu and use print now um, here's where you'll select your printer and what we need to do is we need to make sure this is going to print 100% full size. Uh, the geometry orientation is already set to landscape. We need to change that to portrait as we want to cut the part out here. This is probably the most important part right here. Fit to paper size is exactly what you don't want to do. You want this to be printed at one-to-one -one scale. That way the measurement that we took here of eight inches is actually going to print out eight inches tall on the page. Now we can go ahead and click OK and print. I don't need to print this so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. Now when it comes to saving of the file. The best way I have found to save this file in the same format it was opened in is to just use this X over here and close the file. Not this one up here to close the entire program, just this one here to close this file. Now you can come over here and click the save icon or you can come down here and click save but if you do that it's going to try to save it in a DWG format now if you want to save it as a DWG drawing file that's fine but if you want to save it as a DXF look at all the various DXF files that there are and we don't know for certain what file format this was when we opened it. I mean was it a uh, release 2010 binary drawing? Was it a release 14 ASCII drawing? We don't know. It could have been any of these. So to eliminate the confusion and not have to dig into research and figure out what kind of file it was, I'll just hit cancel and avoid that entire process by coming over here and hitting close on this smaller X in the corner draft site will ask me if I want to save the changes I've made I say yes and it saves it in the same drawing type the same format that the original was so that's how I modify a DXF file in draft site I want to thank you very much for watching and if you got anything at all out of this video give me a thumbs up down there and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification every time I post a video. Now, whether you do that or not, again, thanks for watching and have a great day.